to your new roles. And now it is time to hear from our new Secretary General, Bishop Thomas. Dear Thomas, together with the WA family, I'm looking forward to your inaugural address. Kindly take the floor. Thank you very much. The World Evangelical Alliance is a very diverse movement. When in 1846, Anglican priests and the Salvation Army started to work together, people thought that would not be possible. German Lutheran pastors and professors invited Methodists from the United States to preach the gospel. In Germany, that was unheard. Today, we are even much more diverse. We have been, become much more worse confessionally. We have become much diverse in ethnic questions, in language, in culture. We have churches in the Brazil rainforest with that worship 10 meters above the ground in high trees. And we have churches in skyscrapers in Malaysia who have their church in the 20th floor of a high building. What then is evangelical? Well, I can tell you one thing, evangelicals never agreed on politics. And you can see this around the globe. We have countries in which we have members, evangelical members in parliament, in the government side and in opposition. We did not agree on politics yesterday and we did not agree on politics in 1846. This is not the secret of the evangelical movement. For me, to be evangelical, evangelical as the term describes the enthusiasm for the DNA of Christianity. Yes, also the search for the DNA of Christianity. And I want to think a little bit about the question how this relates to the DNA of Christianity, if we call it evangelical. To give you an example, we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, we believe in Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit filled the believers, the members of the church. Now, in so far, someone questions the historicity and says it did not happen or does not need to happen in, in, in real history, we stand for the history of our faith. Jesus did get new life from his father. The Holy Spirit fell on the believers. And then some will say that is evangelical, but we do not believe in this because we think it's something confessional, something specific. We believe in it because we think it's the DNA of Christianity that we owe everything to what Jesus did and what the Holy Spirit does. When it comes to the Bible, we are deeply convinced that the Bible is the confession of the church. You might ask why does he use a political term? Well, if you look into history, the idea of paper document that would rule the people it comes from the Old Testament. The Torah in the Old Testament was above David, was above the king, was above everybody. Some people mock at us and say we have a paper pope. We are proud to have a paper pope because the paper pope assures that none of us, including me, are above the word of God. We all submit to the word of God. No one is above him. No. There is someone above him. It's Jesus himself, who is the center of Holy Scripture, and the Holy Spirit, who is the author of Holy Scripture, at least to our belief. And this is where we think a movement like ours can bring together the huge emphasis of the Reformation 500 years ago on Holy Scripture, with a lot of revival movements, including our Pentecostal friends and our charismatic friends, and their emphasis on that the Holy Spirit is the only one that can transform us and can, trans can transform the world. Let me quote to you from a very Calvinist document, people would say, 1647 in the Westminster Confession written in England. There it says, 
the supreme judge by whom all controversies of religion are to be determined and all degrees of counsels, opinions of ancient writers, doctrine of men, and private opinions are to be examined, and in whose sentence we are to rest, can be no other, and you would expect now, than the scripture. No, in 1647 they said, can be no other but the Holy Spirit speaking in scripture. We believe the Holy Spirit is ruling his church. What we believe that is not in opposition to Holy Scripture, but he is the author of the Holy Scripture and he is using his confession, the Holy Scripture, to rule the church. That for us is DNA of Christianity and it is evangelical. In so far as some people question it, then it might be seen as something specific to us, but we believe it's Christian. And that came very true. In just two examples I want to give them shortly, I already mentioned the document Christian Witness in a multi-religious world. Evangelicals always have been about preaching that Jesus died on the cross for us and only in him we find communion with God and eternal life. But now the document 2011 starts with mission is the very being of the church and speaks about every believer to be obliged to witness to other people about the gospel. Is this evangelical or Christian now? It is Christian in so far as obviously all churches agree now that mission is the very being of the church. This is what Jesus Christ handed us over. In so far that not everybody is happy about it or enacting it, it might be seen as evangelical. But we have to be very careful to say that automatically we do what it is said. Mission is not always the being of our local churches. We often have to be reminded as evangelical churches that we have to put the witness of the ghost gospel into the center. And then there's the last example, uh, religious freedom and persecution. In 1846, the World Evangelical Alliance was the first ever large religious body, body speaking up for religious freedom. And that meant speaking up against state churches, against Christian nationalism. We know that even in our ranks still today is a very hot potato against Christian nationalism, against the state pressing his religion, his thoughts on the church. After a long history, meanwhile, the Catholic Church in the Second Vatican Council said exactly the same that religious freedom is not only just a political principle, but it's the DNA of Christianity. Is this evangelical? Well, we have stood for it for a long, long time, but we did not stand for it as a confessional extra, but as the belief that this is Christianity pure. God himself wants to be loved, wants us to trust him. He wants our life. He does not want us to Pray to him because we are forced or because somebody paid us or somebody cheated us. He wants our very trust and very heart and his very love. And love is something you cannot force on. So I'm deeply convinced that the evangelical movement stands up for specifics in the Christian world. But they are not specific in the sense that they are owned by us and distinguish us from others but they are the DNA of the Christian faith itself. And when we strive for unity within evangelicalism, if we want to bring the Anglicans, the Pentecostals, the Reformed, the Salvation Army, all those groups in our midst together, we only can do it around this DNA of Christianity. And we are open to any other church outside our movement to join us in those points of the DNA. And so we hope wherever possible to prolong our vision to many other churches in this world. Thank you very much. I'm privileged to serve the World Evangelical Alliance. I know we all are sinners. We are under the one Holy Scripture, which defines when we fail in what we do. And so I'm deeply convinced that is only the prayer of millions and the prayer of close friends who might know some things which others do not know about me that makes it possible to take over a task which is too big just for one human being. Amen. <laughs>